Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to call the special city commission meeting for Wednesday, April 6, 2022 to order. May we have the roll call, please? Commission, Commissioner Radford? Here. Commissioner King? Here. Commissioner McCool? Here. Commissioner Ramos? Present. Commissioner Sosa? Here. Vice Mayor Vila Vasquez? Present. And Mayor Herzberg? Here. Now we all, may we all please stand for pledge to the flag. Commissioner King, would you like to lead us in the pledge? Okay, this evening's special city commission meeting is um, item 4A is sections 11. One and 11.2 of the city of Daltona charter requires that the charter be reviewed at least every 10 years. This item is to review and confirm that amendments one, four, and five recommended by the charter review committee, CRC, not be moved forward to the voters per the city commission. Miss Stacy. Um, you took all of my words, but good evening. Good evening. Uh, so at our last meeting where we discussed the charter review and the recommendations that were put forth from the committee, uh, there was consensus from this commission to not move forward with amendment number one, which would be um, how commissioners are elected, that being um, at large. Uh, amendment number four, which would make the Charter Review Committee uh, essentially an independent committee. Any decisions that they make on amendments would go directly to the ballot. And amendment number five, uh, which was to establish environmental considerations for all major city decisions. So as consensus, you also, we don't want to move those three forward, so we're bringing this back to you at a special committee meeting, I'm sorry, special commission meeting uh, for action. Thank you, ma'am. So do you need this in the form of a motion and a second to not move forward those items that were um, Met, uh, told by consensus item one, item four, item five to be, have those not move forward, correct? Yes, please. Okay, Commissioner Bradford. I move that amendments one, four, and five recommended by the Charter Review Committee not be moved forward to the voters. Okay, properly moved by Commissioner Bradford, seconded by Commissioner King to not move forward amendments one, four, and five. Do we have any, any, mother, any other questions from the commission? If not, we will go to public comment. Is there anyone that wanted to speak on item this item of not moving forward one, four, and five? No, Madam Mayor. Okay, that closes the public comment portion of this hearing of this item. May we please vote, please? Hold on, hold on, give me. There, there you go. Okay, unanimous to not move these three forward. Item B, section 11-1 and 11-2 of the city charter requires it be review, reviewed every 10 years. This item is to review and discuss amendments two and three as recommended by the charter review committee during the regular commission meeting to be held on February 21st, 2022 and to continue the deliberation on the option of a complete rewrite of the city charter as discussed during the commission workshop. Ms. Stacy. So a quick review, we have amendment number two, which is uh, the compensation for the commission. Uh, that was one item that was moved forward for additional consideration and discussion. And amendment number three, which was <coughs> adding language to the charter that would put an 18 month limit on an acting city manager. Um, in addition, we did have the brief discussion at the last meeting regarding a complete rewrite within your packet, and I have that up here on the screen. So essentially what was done here was each of the sections within the charter, the items that you see in green are the things that are required to be in your charter. The things in yellow are, I guess, the cautionary ones. So we'll take section number five, the city commission, that's in yellow, that particular section, because the first part, items one through five, are required to be in your charter. Items six through 11 are not. They can either be handled by policy or ordinance. Um, so as you can see, the, the, the greens outweigh the reds. So there are items within your charter, some of them that even cause some conflict. Um, as I talked last time, section six regarding 
uh, budget and appropriations. All of the items that we need to follow are by state statute. We do have a city policy that follows state statute. There is a provision in here every year, the finance department has to make some notes within the audit statement in order to be in compliance with state statute and the charter. It doesn't have to be there. You can just have the policy and go with that. As state statute changes, then you don't have to worry about what's in your charter. So we'll move on to uh, what the Charter Review Committee put forward with regards to amendment number two. It was changing the compensation for the mayor to be 50% of the salary of the County of Volusia chair and the compensation for each commissioner at 50% of the salary of the County of Volusia chair members. Stacy, do we Thank have you. this in a in a PowerPoint or do we're trying to find are the, or are your slides not? Uh, this was from from last time, so okay. this was just a, a brief uh, to, recap. to keep everyone okay. yeah kind of on track with where we were. So that's what uh, the uh, second amendment mm -hmm. was from the Charter Review Committee, and then the th the third amendment number three was adding language. So anyone serving in an acting city manager or city attorney position would not exceed 18 months. Okay, so these are the two that we said we would bring back to discuss, and there was also discussion of looking at other issues in the charter that are, are problematic. Am I correct? Yes, ma'am. So um, let me get out of this thing here really quick, sorry. Um, basically, since you have <clears throat> gone over this, in terms of looking at the problematic issues in the charter, the things that you talk about, especially the budgetary items, if the, cause does the commission want to listen to what she has to say in terms of what's in the charter that is problematic or not? Yes? Okay. Yes? Yes. Because I mean, to me it's a concern. This is, we, we do this once every 10 years. And I know the last charter review, we took out some old language and so forth that wasn't applicable anymore. And if we're really gonna review this and state statute has changed, um, what is problematic in this, in the charter that either state statute has changed is covered or is conflicting or not clear? I would ask those questions. Ma Ma yes. May I, may I may? I'm sorry. Um, I don't have a problem going through the, in, re, in reviewing, uh, but we have two that we've decided mm -hmm. to move on and talk about that was recommended by the Charter Review Committee. So my question is, why don't we address those two and then we can move forward to whether or not changes need to be made. And, and that was kind of my question. Do we want to go ahead and start with one and two and then is the commission open to looking at the other ones? Commissioner Bradford, you're on the board. Well, and that's exactly, uh, Commissioner Ramos, what I was gonna say is that I think we should go over these items right now, you know, to go over this complete charter and do it correctly, it's not gonna be done in one meeting. I think that's something that is, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, Ms. Stacy, but this is not a one meeting hash through. This no, is a, another, honestly, committee if we go through this, this is this is our this is a lot of hours right here, um, and we've already got them tasked. Now my question is, is if we go through and we move forward, or we discuss what we've decided to move forward, um, to, so we're running out of time to get it on the ballot, is my understanding. So we're not limited to continuing to do a charter review after this. This is like what we're doing right now is to get it on the ballot for 2022. I don't want to rush through these items because I think by pushing ourselves through this right now and rushing through it and uh, there's a lot more coming ahead. You know, you're looking at budget coming ahead and to try to fit everything here in, I just see it's too much at a meeting. You know, so I think that's something that we would schedule and break up into periodic workshops and say take so many at a time and go through it so we're not in mind blown overload. 
What kind of a time frame, Stacy, do we have to get this on the ballot? I think that's the first question. When does this have to be submitted to the supervisor of elections? Any changes August. that we make, whether it's these two, one, five, nothing. I think it was August. I'm trying to find my I notes. I believe it is August. Ms. Kipola, with that early September, this like the supervisor election indicated. I don't know. We just went over that. And then, would we want a committee to work with us on this as well? Let's see. Sorry, I have that here somewhere. August 9th? August 23rd. 23rd? Okay. So you have to have uh, two hearings for an ordinance. So it would go on the general election ballot, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So August 29th. 23rd. 23rd. Okay. Madam Mayor. Yes. Um, it's August 23rd, but you uh, need to remember that this is in the form of an ordinance, so there will be two readings. So essentially, you need to say the last meeting in July that you all would have to make a decision so that we could have the two readings uh, in time for the August 23rd. Okay, so the last meeting in July. Okay, thank you. Okay, so Commissioner Bradford and Commissioner Ramos will start with the first item, the compensation and see if we want to move that forward, modify it, or have discussion of not moving that forward. Correct? Correct. Okay. Commissioner McCool and then Vice Mayor. No? Um, I, I would like to wait, okay? Um, I was hey. just adding to the conversation prior to. Okay, so. you want to just pop off? Yeah. Vice Mayor? I have a question regarding the comment made by Commissioner Bradford. Um, I understand that break up and doing things individually, but once this gets approved um, and it's part of the charter, we can't go back and make any changes until 10 years, right? Right? No, I don't, I don't think you have to wait 10 years. Five years? Next general election. Yeah. You could arguably, Mayor, you could arguably do it the following year. Right. You'd have to go through the process, adopt the ordinance, and then put it on the, uh, on the ballot. The, the charter only requires that we do it once within a 10-year period. It makes us do it once in a 10-year period. You can do it more, yes. but it sets the minimum standard as mm -hmm. every 10 years you have to do it. Mm -hmm. You can't get out of doing it right. Just within trying to that keep time frame, but you can do it more. Right, keep it, keeping it relevant. To changing times. Okay, thank you. Commissioner King, and then Commissioner Ramos, and Commissioner McCool. All right, um, first thing I want to say is that if, if we leave this the way it is, um, I would be opposed to moving it forward from here. Um, like I said at the last meeting, when I decided to run, I didn't know I got paid. Um, I, I think that having an average pay or 50% of what the, the averages of all of us that are out here doing what we do in Volusia County um, is an adequate amount of pay. But I would suggest that we modify this to say that we at least get the cost of living increase each year. So whatever the average is, plus the cost of living increase. And I think that would be fair. Um, I don't think that that's asking for um, a lot, but I think that it's, it will show up um, in, our, in the compensation that whoever's sitting up here um, gets. Um, I just don't see any reason to, you know, say, okay, well, you know, I'm making uh, 10,000 now, 
Um, I think that people up here ought to make 18,000 and that's that. Um, heck, there's not a person out here in our community that wouldn't like to have that kind of a raise. Um, and I, I would hate to be the one that is self-serving enough to vote that in. But I think that it's only fair that we receive um, a cost of living increase. So that would be my suggestion to modify this, leave it the way it is with the, with the addition of the fact that we would receive a cost of living increase, whatever that cost of living increase is, 3%, whatever. If you wanted to say 3% plus one, that would be okay, but I wouldn't go any more than that. So on page eight of 30 of this, um, of your packet is what um, it says in the charter. Right. Under compensations and expenses, it's redlined under there. And it is the paragraph under compensation. And then Commissioner King, you would keep that fully the same and just add a cost of living increase in there? So. Commissioners, do we have anything? And then we would basically would, would remove this amendment and replace it with the current verbiage and add a cost of living increase in there. That's correct. The mayor and members of the city commission shall receive annual compensation payable biweekly. Um, average annual salary of the mayor and commissioners in the cities within Volusia County. Madam Mayor, and, if, I, yes. if I can make a suggestion here. Um, rather than saying cost of living, I, I think you need to have a standard like CPI. Um, the CPI is recognized as the, the, the standard bearer of what the, uh, uh, the cost of living is. Um, if you just use cost of living, then it's uh, vague in terms of what standard we're going to use. So my recommendation using what Mr. King was saying would be um, said rate plus cost, uh, CPI as determined by the U.S. government. Um, that'd be fine. Okay, um, I have um, Commissioner Ramos, McCool, and Bradford. Are, would you let, let, let's just go down the road. Commissioner Ramos. Thank you, Madam Mayor. All right. Commissioner King, it doesn't matter how we do it, it's gonna seem self-serving to someone out there. Um, and I, I will say what I stated the last time, this is a recommendation. This is not our recommendation. This was a recommendation by the committee. We're not the ones voting for it. The residents are, will be the one voting regardless of what we put. And um, unless we can come up with something reasonable in a time frame, we're gonna spend a lot of time going back and forth. What's, what's fair, what's not fair? I say let's move it forward the way it is and let the residents decide whether it's something we should have or not have. Thank you. Commissioner McCool. Um, it is my belief to just move forward with the cost of living. I don't, it's not changing the base salary. It's just moving with the times. Um, I, I mean, that's all I have to say about that particular item. 3%, so, per, 3 whatever the, whatever the CPI is yeah. at the time. I, okay, so you agree with Commissioner King then? I, I do. Uh, you know, the average annual salary of, of mayors and commissioners in the cities with Volusia County, you know, um, it's standardized at that juncture. You know, it's, that's what everyone, you know, pays their, their people, so. No, that's not, that, you're, you're just taking the average, average of what everyone pays. That's pay. what I'm yeah. saying, the yeah, average. The average, yeah. Yeah, I'm fine with that, and whatever that CPI is at the time. Um, Commissioner Bradford. I agree with CPI, but <clears throat> I also think it should not exceed staff, um, staff raises. So if we have a CPI, but we've had a bad year where staff was not entitled to a raise because of whatever reason, I don't think our raise should trump any, any staff member's raise. So I think it would CPI or um, staff's amount. Okay, Commissioner Sosa. 
Yeah, I agree with CPI, but if we do keep it at the 50% of the county, I think we need language in there to let the residents know what exactly that raise is gonna be. If we're going from 11,000 now to 24,000, they should know that there's gonna be a $13,000 bump there, or you can put it in a percentage. Uh, but if we're gonna move forward with the 50%, I think that language needs to be in there so voters know exactly what they're voting on. Okay, so Vice Mayor, do you have an opinion on this? Because we're gonna go right down the... I, I think I would just keep it as it is because um, as they said, it's just a recommendations for the residents to agree on it. And um, honestly, 50% um, of what it is right now, I don't even think it comes out to $15 an hour um, for, for pay. Um, I would just keep it the way it is and let the uh, residents decide on it. Keep, keep, you're, you're saying, I, I just want to be clear as I'm writing this down. Yes. Vice Mayor, you're saying keep what the Charter Review Committee Recommended, said. yes. Commissioner Ramos said the same thing. Commissioner Sosa, do you want to keep it the way it is, but then you want to add uh, clarification for the voters, not as part of the Charter Amendment? Not, but clarification for the that it's going from like 11,000 to whatever it to, is. Yes. I, I think the county makes like 44 or something yeah, like I don't that, know. so 22, so right. it's almost eleven, twelve thousand $12,000 bump. So, okay. you know, let them know that they would be seeing a huge increase in commissioner pay. So you're okay with moving this forward, but with a disclaimer on there identifying what it is. Exactly. Okay, okay Commissioner McCool is on the board. Uh, yeah, I really need to understand something also because here's the thing, commissioner and county council salaries are different animals. You have City of DeBerry, right? You have Orange City, Volusia County City Commissioners, not county. I'm needing to understand the, I need to understand what the thought was behind that. You know, for comparing it with the county as opposed to charter language at present says city, right? says city, if you read it to charter, it says, said city. But that language is county, which I, I'm not understanding the rationale behind that. Well, I think what they're saying is when you when you really look at the, the salary of the city commissions, the cities that you're pointing out, um, DeBerry has a population of 20,000 right. something. Orange mm -hmm. City is like 10 or 11,000. DeLand is like 38,000. DeLand makes at simply what we do. The other cities that have larger populations make a lot more. Mm -hmm. New Smyrna, uh, Ormond is similar, I think, Daytona and so forth. So I'm not sure if they were, I think what they were probably doing, Stacy, correct me if I'm wrong, is making a very simple formula in the charter. Yes, sir. Uh, Madam Mayor, if I can, in, in listening, and I could be wrong, but in listening to the committee, I, that's exactly what it was. Being that we are the largest city in the county, they, and to make it, mathematically easy or to, to be more direct, that was the purpose of it. We're the largest city, why not then compare it to the county and split the difference? Yeah, my, my thing with that, and, and just in all air of transparency, okay, is that the county manage, what's the population, 400,000? 550. 550? 550. 550. We're at 100, 100. right? Not so, quite. Huh? Not quite 100. Not quite, okay, not quite 100. I mean, You're getting into really college 90, math here, 90, brother. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is if we are trying to account for that, right, it's, I don't know that the math works out. I'm just trying to be fair here. Well, I don't think it's necessarily a math. It's, I think that when the whole, the whole issue for me with a charter is it needs to be clear. Mm -hmm. You can't start putting all these variables in there and all this stuff that is ambiguous because that's what gets us in trouble and gets everybody in trouble. So I think with what we have now, it says clear, the, the, the compensation of all the, the mayors and the commission of all the cities, you get the average of that. That's a very clear mathematical stance. And if you add CPI, it's clear. And, and if, let the attorney and everybody, you know, if we say you're gonna keep it the way it is but add CPI every year, that's a, it's, it's clear, it's a number, you can't predict it, but it's a clear direction. If you start adding 
things like Commissioner Bradford said, well, the CPI we can add on, but not if staff doesn't get the adequate amount of raise. That starts getting into me into way more verbiage than how you, how, to make it clear. I mean, if you have a really good year, okay, but staff, you have to remember also, staff has the benefit of benefits. They get full health insurance, half for their spouse, they get FRS, they get other pensions. None of that is included in the city commission. And to be clear for the, for the record, it doesn't matter to me how we do this. If, you want to, if the, the majority wants to move it forward as written, and, or the majority wants to keep it and not move it forward, or do CPI, I am ambiguous to everything. I would like a clear, clean, document and I understand why they did it that way because it's clean and I listen clean. I believe that the goal of everyone I believe that the goal of everyone is to have a fair and humble distribution of equity here right for the work the fact is is that we would all like to be honorable and say we do this for free we got into this for public service but we are allotted a salary right I don't want the I don't want our residents to because people are struggling out there, you know what I mean? As there always will. People will always struggle. We'll all have people that struggle. I just want this to be fair. I know that we have charter committee input here. This is the recommendation of, of charter. Um, so, you know, I... Madam um, Mayor. Well, let yeah. Commissioner Bradford is on the board, and then after that, then John... Let, just a quick question, Joyce, and I'm sorry, I hate to say it, but I don't even know what I make on this. So, I raised this year, what what percentage was that as it is right now? Do you know? That's done by HR. Mr. Peters, do you know? What was, what was the commissioner's raise this year based on the way number six is right now under compensation and expenses? So the way it is saying that we get a percentage of the Volusia cities and Volusia, you know, the it, mayor's salary and that. What do you know what we received this year, Ms. Stacy? You want to believe it the, av it the average of the uh, other cities? Right, but we got a raise this year. Do you know what that percentage was? Well, that, that's part of what I was going to bring up. One of the difficulties is um, some cities have a cost of living adjustment that goes into effect on October 1. Uh, some cities have it built in that um, they can vote in. Uh, much like Palm Coast is doing right now, they can vote in a pay raise, but the pay raise does not occur until after the next election because the commission cannot give themselves a pay raise during their current term. So it would not go into effect until even number election years. So it makes it difficult as to, I, you know, we would almost have to make two separate adjustments, one on October 1 and then one after election day because there's no consistency on when their raises go in effect. So, you know, if, if I can make a suggestion, um, and kind of going back to what Mr. Sosa said, is just come up with a number today, saying, you know, the commissioner pay will be blank. You know, you can use whatever formula you have to come up with that number today. The mayor's pay will be blank, and it will go up by CPI each year on October 1, and that clears it up. Um, because, like I said, the way it is right now, different cities have different dates in which their pay raises occur. And uh, it makes it a little more difficult as to when we apply it to you all. But, okay, thank you. Bridget, you have something? Um, I think the first thing that we have to decide as a, as a commission is, do we move this forward or do we keep what we have and not touch it at all and, and don't even address compensation or do we keep what we have and add CPI? Because you can't pick a number and just say, you know, like the commission, a commissioner will earn $11,000 a year and then CPI or the mayor will earn, you know, $12,000 a year in CPI. I think that you have to have a, a, I don't know, but that's just me. Let's see what it is, thank you. So, 
So, um, and, and are, does anyone know if we are on the, this gets adjusted every two years, right? So it, did it get, was it adjusted this year or will it be adjusted next year? Was it adjusted last year? We don't even know that, right? It was, a, it, I mean. Yeah, it, yeah, but we're not on here. We're not on here. So if you look at the bottom, this is the one that... Okay, just, this is the bi-weekly salary? We're right, the this is the bi-weekly. Okay. And that's what I'm saying. I'm trying to look up real quick to see what it was prior to this, right. and then I'll tell you what the raise was. Madam Mayor, we're the average. Right, right, right. Yeah. I see it on the bottom. Sorry. I don't know. I can actually... You know what? I don't know. Pull up my W-2 and see what that says. Should say. Well, hold on. Oh, that's, that's right. That's right. Oh, yes, perfect. because my W-2 definitely wasn't this. <laughs> right, but I want to know when it was adjusted. Yeah, but I want to know when it, was it adjusted. Madam Mayor, isn't Daytona Beach, um, hmm? Madam Mayor, isn't Daytona Beach, aren't they full time? No. no. They're not? None of them are. They're every every Everyone? city in Volusia okay. County is a council management form of government. Thank you. How can this be? 545, 14,001. Yeah, that's more like it. Yeah, that's more like it. This is more like it. I mean, it's like seven hundred thirty dollars. It's nothing. I'm not the best on numbers. Does that make sense? One, 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 three, point seventy six minus. Joyce, do we know what the salaries are for county chair and the council? Yeah, but if you and if you look at but look at what New Smyrna did for their increase. I mean, if you look at New Smyrna calculated on Volusia County Council salaries last year, was it New Smyrna? Wait, hold on. No, they weren't the. No, they were pretty. They were actually pretty close, right? They're about the same. I don't see it. Daytona really didn't go up that much at all. Who went up a lot was DeBerry. They went up. They went up thirty-six hundred dollars. That's where your big bump was, because the other ones are. Yeah, everybody else is pretty the same. Oh. New Smyrna went up about okay. 1400 So if I'm looking at this right, it says the CPI went up 7.5% last year? Yeah, this, there were, there were, the reason this is such a big adjustment is there were two cities that really went up. DeBerry went up um, from 6,000 to 9,600 for the mayor and 4,800 to 7,800. They went up like $3,000. 
and the other city that went up was Oak Hill. From 5,400 for the mayor to 7,200 and the same for the commission. So they, those two cities is, are what skewed the, they caused it to be a higher than normal increase. Otherwise, I don't, I don't see those other cities raising it that much. I mean, that, that was the, those were the two that had a big, which never had that big of a jump in the past. No. So they must do theirs by ordinance. Okay, so commissioners, um, now that you have these numbers in front of you, we're going to go ahead and, and what we really need to decide is, are we going to move forward with this? Or are we going to go ahead and keep what we have or keep what we have and add CPI? And if we have public comment on this item, do we have anybody signed up for? Would Madam like Mayor, we have two public comments. Okay, do we want to go for public comment on this? Yes. yes. Let's go forward for the public comment and then we'll come back and discuss this. Okay, Kathy, Brian, and then Albert Brian. Kathy, Brian, please. Sosa? Culver's is done. Culver's is done. <laughs> it's 7.05. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Good evening, Kathy Bryan Daltona. Um, I know I wrote you guys an email on some of this stuff because I was unable to attend the last workshop. Um, you still hear it in my voice a little bit. Regarding this, um, on the paper, first of all, it says remove from charter and establish city ordinance. I say I would not do that, um, simply for the fact that I think when you, once you do it by city ordinance, then you're going by the whim of each commission. Whereas if you have established in a charter, then you're talking a minimum of five to 10 years and it can be redone again. I think, watch, having watched every single one of the charter review meetings, the people who wanted to do your 50%, we're looking at it like you guys are the largest city in, Del in, you know, in Volusia County, and that's understood. However, the difference between what they weren't taking into consideration is the difference between, say, here in Daytona, or even here in Delan, is both of those areas have larger commercial bases so you've got more tax money coming in, and they, you know, they tend to have more things in the way of special events. I think eventually, once the city of Deltona gets rolling with more of that kind of thing, we, then maybe we can look into another bump up. Um, one of the things that was suggested was a medium between keeping it right where it is now and the 50% of the Volusia County, because I absolutely, as a, as a voter, uh-uh. Um, and, and I know you guys all do, you know, you guys do good stuff and you get deserve to get paid, but this was never meant to be, you know, a full-time job. This, this was not supposed to be, I'm, I'm going to school to be a mayor, and this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. No, um, it, it's, it's for a certain amount of time to serve, and then, you know, you may decide to move up or go back to what you were doing before or otherwise. So consider the fact, and, and, and I don't want it to be difficult for you either, but you, you did, there was an option of, of like a split between the two. Instead of 50%, maybe 33%. Tie it to your CPI. Um, you were concerned about staff. You could even consider adding in, and, and, and again, try not, not to make it too difficult, but add in the verbiage not to exceed staff percentage raise or otherwise. Because, you know, I get that too. And I, I appreciate that you guys are all looking at the fact that you don't want to look self-serving. Um, and I'm not, but I, I feel I feel like generations to come, you deserve it. And this is a tough time right now because everybody's feeling poor at the gas station and everywhere else. So um, I, I just want to say I think you guys have got a couple of options to work with. I'm definitely not for what the folks on the committee, um, some of those being recently out of county and city, um, which which I was fairly disappointed in. But I think. Uh, I think you've got I think you've got a little options besides just what's there and going back to where you are now. But I love the idea of tying in your CPI to get your raises. So that's it. I'm gonna let the man speak. Thank you. Albert Bryan, please. Albert Bryan, Katana. Y'all want a number. I'll give you a number. For the mayor, 16,770. For the commission, 13,104. 
That's based on a bi-weekly 26-week year. That works out to be $645 bi-weekly for the mayor, $504 bi-weekly for the commission. I think also that uh, it should be based on CPI. I think it should be a 3% cap. And there's a reason for this. Right now, as you all look at this, you're at an average of all the cities. So let's say once a year, they have a really bad year, and one city goes to zero. What if it's the highest one, which is New Smyrna? Or Daytona Beach, sorry. What if, what if it's the second highest, we'll go with New Smyrna. They zero it out. Or if you go with this, let's say one year, Volusia County decides we've had a bad year. We'll zero out our salary. Where does that leave you? If you're based on that and Volusia County says zero, that next year you'll be at zero compensation. So take it out of the hands of the city, take it out of the hands of the county, set a actual salary, a base salary. And then every year, at a max, 3% of what CPI is. No more than 3%. Because the biggest raise you'll give any of your staff is 3%. Am I wrong? I didn't think so. So if you take and you want a solid foundation for your salary, which I'm assuming that's what everybody's working for, is a solid foundation. Take it away from the county, take it away from all the cities. Set a salary, a base salary, and then set raises com complement to the CPI, but no higher than 3%, because you don't want to look like you're getting a better raise than the people that work for you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, Okay, that closes the public comment portion of the hearing. So, commissioners, we need to decide um, what one of the, the members of the public suggested, the one third of um, the county council instead of 50%. And then the gentleman suggested a base salary with a 3% a three percent CPI. So, we have multiple options in front of us. Um, and to move this forward, we're going to have to decide. And I think what we'll do, what we need to do just as a, as a question is, address this first. Is there the majority consensus to move this forward as is? I see no, no, no for sure. Commissioner Sosa, move it forward as is or no? This. You want the disclaimer on there. I want the, if we do move it forward, I want that disclaimer and I could tell you by looking at the last time this hit the amend, or the ballot, it was turned down in significant numbers. So um, if you want to look at maybe doing a, a, somewhere in the middle, and cap and CPI at 3% annually, uh, I would be up to that. Okay, so from what I, I, I'm getting here, this as stands, the majority of the commission is not in favor of moving it as the way it is. Commissioner Sosa will go for it if there's a disclaimer with the, with the actual salary put in there how that works in the charter by putting that in there, unless you put a line in there that says this is, or you'd have to put it on the ballot and not make it part of the charter question. You'd have to have the charter question like this and then have the, the underneath portion that's not part of the charter, um, the amendment, say the disclaimer of what that would be. And, and I am inclined to think, sir, that it would be a deal breaker. I think it, if, you, if, you, if you do that, it would be a deal. But, but and the other side of that coin is I think there's probably 75% of the city that have, of the voters that have no idea what we make. Some people think we make $100,000 a year. 
other people think we don't get paid anything. And I've heard that, and, and I'm sure all of you have heard that as well. So I think um, now, this as stands is out. Am I correct? Okay. This as stands with a disclaimer on the bottom that states what this salary would be. Let's go down the thing. Do we have a majority for that? Commissioner King, yes or no? No. Commissioner McCool, yes or no? With that, yes. Yes. Because that, that's going to, the, the, and your other option, your other option is to keep what we had and add a CPI or to take a base salary and add a CPI. Commissioner Bradford. Well, I was just going to throw in there just so people are educated here. So the raise we just received over two year period was 5.3%. The CPI for 2021, it said um, for January 21st through January 22 was 7.5%. So our current plan right now, we made 5.3 over two years, which personally I don't think is bad because that's, that's more than what I think some staff made because I think one year we didn't give a 3% and then last year we went back up only because of, well, we probably went higher only because we raised minimum wage, correct? I think if it wasn't for raising everybody up to minimum wage, the normal, say, 3%, 3%, we're very close to that 5.3. I think the minimum wage through was like... Unless you unless you were in management, some of those people got a lot higher than 3%. Yeah, not by... And by then we also had a salary survey that raised people up by quite a bit. Right, but that's not a normal year. No, but that was a big bump for a lot of it, uh, you know, right. in the last that's few years. That's not a normal year. So looking at that, our existing program, we're at 5.3. And to do a CPI right now was 7.5. They said a cost of living was 7%. I just did a quick, just quick look up on it. Now, that's this year. What's going to happen next year? What's going to happen the year before that? What's, I mean, we're like, let's get our hourglass and look at this thing. So whereas I'm almost inclined to say, hey, I'm fine with it the way it is. Because we're actually getting the average of all of our cities, to me, is fair. So I'm personally okay with, at this point, leaving it exactly the way we have it right now. In the charter currently. As, as the current charter, because I actually feel more comfortable with that than going with the CPI, which can change like that. Madam Mayor, if I may, yes. absolutely. If we're not gonna go with this, I say let's keep it the way it is and avoid all the headaches of going back and forth, because then we're re if we're gonna set the base, then that's another question. Who are you to set your own base? Yeah. I understand we're hearing from, from the public but at the end of the day, we're the ones setting that base. So if, if this is not an option that we're not willing to go for, I say let's scratch it and just leave it the way it is. Commissioner McCool. What y'all said, seriously, it takes us out of the mix. It, it leaves it what our constituency is used to. And we rise and fall with our constituency that way. You know what I mean? If they if they if they rise we rise if they fall we fall and it's we're collectively together. I mean I appreciate all the sentiments of trying to have us fairly compensated, but that takes all that takes all of us out of it. It it just does. It leaves it to the the wind of economics, and I think that that's a a good deal for uh, uh, yeah. Yes. Oh wait, Do yeah, Commissioner Ramos, you're on the board. Do we need a motion for this? Uh, yes, yes, please. Yes? Yes. So I, I guess the first motion is just to deny uh, the proposed amendment number two and leave it as it is on our current charter. Second. Okay, properly moved by Commissioner Ramos, seconded by Commissioner Bradford to be clear for the record to not move this item, which is proposed amendment two forward and not address compensation at all and leave it the way it is in the charter. That is the... That is the Okay, any other comments from commissioners before we vote on this? May yes, ma'am. May I request that the way it is at the charter be read out loud so the residents know exactly what it, we're voting for here? Yes. Joyce, do you want to read it or do you want me to read it? Doesn't matter to me. I can read it if you don't have it. 
She has it? Okay, right out of the book. Compensation and expenses. Compensation, the mayor and members of the city commission shall, shall receive annual compensation payable biweekly, equivalent to average annual salary of the mayor and commissioners in the city, cities within Volusia County. Said compensation shall not, sh excuse me, shall not include benefits except medical benefits under the city's group health insurance plan. The premium cost of which shall be fully paid by the members of commission which elect, who elect coverage. Said compensation shall be identified as a line item within the annual budget and shall be automatically adjusted every two years, coinciding with adoption of the annual budget. So okay. what it's saying is that the commission gets a raise every two years, not it including benefits, unless you choose to take the benefits and pay out of your own pocket. And, and to be clear, mm -hmm. Vice Mayor, it is only a raise if the other cities increase theirs. So it is at the mercy, because if you see in 2021, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine didn't have any change. So it wouldn't be a raise. So, several did. And if some decreased, it could be, a de it, did, it could go down. So I would say it is at the mercy of the other 16 cities, 15 cities, okay? So we have a motion on the floor to deny proposed amendment number two and keep the verbiage as is in the charter. May we vote please. Do you need yours plugged in? It keeps dying out. Okay, mo motion passes seven to zero to eliminate that. Now let's move on to the next one. Ms. Stacy, which is? Uh, the so next one would be an addition of a, a limit for an acting city manager or city attorney to not exceed 18 months. With a, I'm sorry, with a six months additional for extraordinary circumstances. Okay, commissioners, this is another proposed charter amendment. Um, shall not exceed 18 months, but may be extended by the commission for an additional six months for extraordinary circumstances. Um, any comments on that from anyone? Um, I don't see anybody lighting up the board. Do we wanna go to vice? Oh, board is lit now. Vice Mayor McCool, Sosa, and Bradford. Thank you, Mayor. Did we ever get an explanation? I know, I think you, Mayor, uh, um, asked the question about what does extraordinary circumstances mean? I don't know. Extraordinary, exter does anybody have a definition of extraordinary? Yes, sir, a public comment. And not yet. Mayor. Candidly, extraordinary circumstances are largely what the commission says they are. Okay. Now, you could obviously be absurd in your determination, but there are a precise definition, you're not gonna find it. Madam Mayor, can I make one other comment? Um, I had asked the city attorney the question before um, I don't believe that this amendment would impact my contract because my contract would predate this amendment and I do not believe it would be retroactive to my contract. So I just want to put that out there for clarification. Does that help you, Vice Mayor? Not really, because there's no definition of extraordinary circumstance. Can we hear from the public? Yes, as soon as we go down the board, we'll have public comment. Commissioner McCool? Thank you, Madam Mayor. This is a, uh, incredibly, um, like, just got to take it out and play with it and talk about it, because this is incredibly um, difficult right here. Because the facts are that, one, we are charged with making policy that will be in effect for five to ten years, right, and that will outlast the current 
sitting acting city manager or city attorney. But I think most relevant right now at the very moment is we're talking about our acting city manager because this would impact what we currently have, the acting city manager that we currently have. And this one is a hard one for me because I'm, you know, here's the thing. We have public opinion of our acting city manager. And when I mean public opinion, it would be residents voting on this right now. Are the residents voting on this amendment here based on who we have sitting here now or who we might have sitting here right now, right? And we're making policy for the next five to 10 years. So this one I have, this has been the most talked about as far as people talking to me about mm -hmm. this. So it's thing like that to, to talk about here. Um, you know, do you roll the dice and send it through and let the people you know, let the people just pick, or do you you talk about this? So I just need more input to make a decision, but those are things to think about there. You know, that's, I mean, that's where I'm at with that. I need more input on that and complete transparency as a city commissioner. I've not had enough input. I understand how I feel working directly with the acting city manager at current but I don't feel that I've had enough input. I've had it from charter, obviously, right? Charter, um, and, but in the general public, right? What is the historical data on this? Um, was that due to people really knowing the city manager and that's why they voted it down? Or is this something that's not well, you know, um, well talked about with the residents? So I just want more input on this here from you know what I mean? Thank you. Commissioner Bradford. And, and you just mentioned, John, that this doesn't affect your contract at all. What we have as an acting city manager, you said, even if they said right now, hey, this passes, he's not affected because this went into effect after we appointed him as acting city manager. <clears throat> and what I have to look at is yes, you've got a wonderful gentleman sitting here, but our job isn't tasked on right now. Our job is tasked on present and future and what happens if this guy decides to retire in two years, then what? Mm -hmm. Oh, we changed it just to wrap around one particular person. That's not how we do things up here. Our job isn't easy. Guess what? That's why we get paid the big bucks we just talked about. <laughs> Yay! So. Uh, it is tough, you know, by majority, I think when we had the forms last week, I, which I didn't bring back, bad on me, um, I think clearly the residents have said they want their city manager to live in the city. That was a, every time a, a landslide win that they wanted the city manager in the city. You know, this right here, it goes back to the same thing. You're either going to say, A, we want the city manager to, so that's all we're changing, right? Ms. Stacy? we're not changing that the city manager, it's still saying the city manager has to live in the city, right? That is correct. Okay, so the only thing we're saying is, hey, within X, Y, Z time, we have to start looking and that person's only good for 18 months. Okay, so let me ask you this. If we have an acting city manager who has been here for 18 months, hypothetically, um, we haven't fired him yet, I'm gonna guess that means that he's, or she has done a decent job. Um, most cities, most places, they do require their city managers to live in the city. If he was doing a horrendous job, I'm guessing we probably would have all voted by now to start the search back up. Um, but let's say the next person comes by, then what? Let's say he retires in a couple of years, then what? That's why we have to do this hard decision and set these policies. So this is a tough one. I don't necessarily know. This still takes me back to that whole thing of we're still in ultimate control up here. And if we do, we have to have this again on the city charter. I don't know. I'm kind of torn because as 
as acting commissioners up here, if he was doing a horrible job, we would have already said, get on the search, where's our firm, why isn't this happening, what are we doing? Because, I mean, we got a pretty good track record that if somebody's not doing a good job, they're, they're no longer with us and they've been replaced. I, I, I don't know. So part of me says, does it have to be on here or that's essentially up to us? Again, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I guess I need more information. So somebody else needs to talk and help me understand. I don't even understand this at this point because if somebody's doing a horrible job, then it needs to be changed. But I do feel 100% that they do need to live in the city. I'm, mm -hmm. I am gonna stick with that, but I'm not necessarily 100% struck on that that person, we have to start to search right now. That's me. Thank you, ma'am. Commissioner McCool, then Commissioner King. Okay, I am sorry that I was absent at that moment, okay? I need to understand that part at right now, contractually speaking, simply because, not because it's Mr. Peters, but because of the contract that we have in position right now. I need to understand how that affects us right now, right? Um, and I understand moving forward here, but I need to understand crystal clear, five by five, what that means for the acting city manager sitting in the chair now just because of his contract. I need to understand that. How does that affect you right now? Because this is a one-off. If we if this goes through on our charter, right, I mean, I understand moving forward, but I am needing to understand right now in the context that we have any anybody that we have contractually, I understand what it says here, but how does that affect you right now? Okay, let me start and then I'll let you get Sure. Finish. Um, the, my contract uh, is basically a city manager's contract. It mm -hmm. reads just like any other city manager's contract, except for in the beginning of the second paragraph, it says, but for the fact that the city, uh, Mr. Peters does not live in the city of Deltona, he cannot have the title of city manager. But he has all the authorities of a city manager as outlined in the charter. Mm -hmm. Uh, so there's a but for there. And the second thing that is unique about my contract is in the charter, it says that you have to have a super majority to get rid of me. My contract is a simple majority. So going to Ms. Bradford's point, if at some point you are not happy, you don't need a super majority to get rid of me. You just need a simple majority. And so a 4-3 vote, I'm step back and you all can begin your search. Uh, so the other thing is there is no term limit on my contract. It is basically up to the commission as to, and, and I, I had the right to say I'm done, um, but you know, we collectively decide when the end date is on my contract. Um, I think Mr. Fowler will confirm that because my contract is in place now without a deadline in it, that the Charter Amendment cannot be retroactive to include my contract, and I'll leave that. Uh, okay, before uh, Mr. Fowler speaks, I want to reiterate this, okay, that it is written in our charter at current and has been from here back historically, an acting city manager because they are not considered a charter officer, correct, acting city manager, is not considered a charter officer. Can we uh, re reiterate that? No. Um, acting, interim, whatever you want to call them, uh, unless it is a city manager that meets the residency requirement in the city charter, it's not, not a charter officer. Correct. To that point, I want to add here that that contract was written correctly when that contract was written, because any acting city manager is not a full bona fide charter officer, okay? And that too goes to the point, a charter officer must be replaced at a super majority 5-2. Understanding that, a charter bona fide charter officer. And acting only has ever needed a simple majority 
correct me, Mr. Peters, correct? Correct, Skip? The, the, correct. The, but, but it is in the terms of the contract. I'm, yeah, it, I'm, I don't want to put a blanket one on it because you right. could have somebody else that had the contract mm -hmm. with a different provision on that. My contract is a simple majority. Okay, well, as it stands in the charter, I am wanting to reiterate that an, that an any acting and not a charter officer it, per the charter has to only be a majority vote. Okay, that's all I wanted to clarify. Skip, I'm sorry to have interrupted your thought process. Go ahead. Well, you didn't actually interrupt me. I was agreeing with you. A non-charter uh, officer can be removed by a simple majority. Okay. Is an, is an acting city manager definition on the charter? No. It, no. There is the city manager, and then there's everybody else. Exactly. So I don't quite understand. I, I, um, um, Madam Vice Mayor, what I was reiterating is when we were talking about the items in the contract, contractually speaking, and in the charter speaking, I was trying to differentiate between any other position, right, and a charter officer. So a charter officer is only, and right now traditionally in our charter, is only a bona fide city manager, by definition, a city manager that lives in the city, because you cannot be a city manager unless you live in the city. That's what it takes to make a charter officer. Charter officer contractually, um, talking about Skip, or their contract also, they are named a charter officer way back then under their own terms contractually. So, correct, Skip? While I function as your city uh, attorney, your engagement is with the corporation that I work for, so mm -hmm. I'm not an employee. Mm -hmm. Whereas, Mr. Peters is indeed an employee, and he is an acting city manager, and as such, he's subject to uh, discharge any time uh, a simple majority is inclined to discharge him. And, but by virtue, when I talk about de facto, only the city attorney and the city manager are named as as bona fide de facto charter officers mm -hmm. right now as it is written in yes. the, yes. Yeah, I believe that's correct, yes. Yeah. C Commissioner King. I'm wondering who's gonna win the bet tonight. <laughs> um, Having said everything that we've said about this already, I would be interested to know what the basis was for even putting this out. And I'm assuming that we could probably be enlightened on that. By public comment? By public comment. <laughs> but I'll just tell you what my opinion is, and it's only my opinion. And anybody want to bitch at me, you just bitch at me because it's my, pub it's my opinion. It is my opinion that things like this get put forward or forwarded to us to decide on because someone, whoever that might be, would like to force changes that maybe we don't want to do. A and that bothers me because I hate being manipulated just about as much as I hate being lied to. So saying that and not really having any basis that I can see I personally 
would not move this forward. So there's just no reason for this. I mean, do you want to, you want to hope that the city will say yes to this and maybe we'll be able to start working on getting a new city manager right away. I mean, it seems like it's just a manipulative thing that'll help us get a new city manager when we have a acting city manager that's doing the better job than any city manager, charter officer, that we've had in a very long time. So for me, I'm not moving this forward. We don't need this. And that's just the way I feel. Would you like to put that in form of a motion or would you like to wait till public comment? Okay, we'll go to public comment. There are no speakers on my board, so. Madam Mayor, we have two public comments, Kathy Bryan and then Albert Bryan. Kathy Bryan, please. Kathy's first again. Mm-hmm. Y'all know every other... S cold. Huh? Cold. Oh. I'm freezing. Oh, yeah, yeah but off and on, cold and then hot. Uh, Y'all know every other city that was hoping for a raise because when you guys approved that is crying tonight. <laughs> um, on this... And you guys keep asking, what are extraordinary circumstances? Well, extraordinary is the word they used instead of exigent, because when the lawyer used exigent, everybody's like, what does that mean? <laughs> but think about it. Can, can you define it? What's an extraordinary circumstance? Two years ago, we had no idea that where we would be. And I think that's part of the reason behind this, is that in other words, we had a manager. She ended up getting fired. And so the deputy manager stepped in her place and the, the intention at the time was to go look for somebody else. Obviously, Mr. Peters didn't cover all the qualifications for a true manager, so became acting city manager, then did such a good job. But at some point, you have to, I think you have to kind of lay down the, the law a little bit to say, you know, when this circumstances happen, if this circumstance happens again in the future, how are we gonna handle it? Because right now, y'all, you're just flying by the seat of pants, going with what, the climate is, nothing against you, you know that. But in other words, you've got provisions for a city manager, and like you said, everybody seems to want their city manager to live in their city. What I would like to know, countrywide, because, because most city managers do live in the cities that they, they do, but how many of them are renting versus actually living there? And, you know, so, mm -hmm. And I get why that, to me, it doesn't matter. I'd rather have somebody that does a good job. Um, and that uh, whether they, I, I would like them to be within a certain mileage because if we have a crisis and they need to be here very soon, then we, we need them to live kind of close. But, you know, I think this stemmed out of a pandemic that nobody expected. And what's next? Who predicted that? None of us in our lifetime went through something like this. Not, not here, not since 1918 to my knowledge. Of course, I wasn't around then, so. But I think they're looking for contingencies. What, what if we expect hurricanes? We expect wildfires. What happens when we have an earthquake? Could happen, a volcano eruption. There's always something, you know? So you just, you're, you're covering contingencies. And that's kind of what happened with Mr. Peters. I mean, he stepped in and he was doing so good. Everybody was like, well. So extraordinary circumstances, I don't think you can define them. But I think what you would say, extraordinary circumstances, it's uh, expect the unexpected, right? That's all I got. I liked ex exigent. Well. Thank you. Albert Bryan, please. Albert Bryan, Deltona. To answer your question, Mr. King, it was put forward by uh, Mr. Navich, and his uh, statement at the time was that uh, he thought that 
we were skating along without finishing a process that had been started. But he went out of his way to say that it wasn't pointed towards Mr. Peters. Now you can take that on face value or however you like. Um, here's my problem with this. In the very beginning, I liked this, I really did. Because I don't think at any point in time you should have to stop a process that y'all started to find a good manager. That being said, after I voted for this, I did a lot of research. And I can't find but one charter in the entire nation that has something like this on their books. And that one charter states that because of extensions and researches and stuff like that, they put a cap on the acting manager at 24 months. That was the only one in the nation, and it was out west. The way I look at this, though, that gentleman over there has to be recontracted, more or less, every month or every year, because y'all have to okay the budget. His salary is in your budget. So every 12 months, you have to okay his salary. If you don't like him at the end of the year, are you gonna okay his salary? Hmm, I wouldn't if I was sitting up there. If I had a problem with that gentleman, I'd tell you no. So the way I look at it, this is extraordinarily odd for any charter because you're going out of a way, out of your way to say that a person can only serve for a certain amount of time, no matter how good, no matter how bad he is. It doesn't matter. He can only serve for a certain amount of time, period. By putting a time constraint on anything, you could have a problem. Let's say you have two years in a row while you're making a search for a new manager. You have two years in a row of hurricanes. That man right there will be in this room trying to fix things in our city. He won't have time to make a search. Granted, y'all hire headhunters. Headhunters, for the most part, are in the southeast for this, that you would look at. At least I hope so. That being said, during a hurricane, he's not going to have time, you're not going to have time to interview in a disaster recovery time. You know as well as I do, we had four hurricanes during one year. So if you have two years in a row, like we did back in 2004, 2005, you may not have time within 24 months to find a new manager. So putting a constraint on this, to me, is a little far-fetched, a little ridiculous now. I admit, I voted for this, I did. But I also understand that every year, every 12 months, you have to renew his contract through the budget. So if you don't like him, don't for the, for the budget. Thank you, sir. Okay, that closes Madam, public comment. Correct. Okay, Commissioner McCool, Commissioner Bradford. <laughs> Stacy. <laughs> Commissioner Bradford, you're up. She removed herself. All right, I'm gonna be devil's advocate here because you've already heard my first speech, but Ms. those two brought up some, Ms. Bryant, Mr. Bryant brought up some very valid points, which brought me back to three years ago, two years ago, two and three years ago, let's just leave it at that, where we were at a point of needing good representation for the city. Um, and I believe when the previous acting, the previous city manager, or what well, wasn't acting, he was interim. Interim city manager was here. We all made it very clear that for the people, we have a right to do the search. Then when it was turned over and Mr. Peters came in, there was quite a few of us up here that was very adamant that we owe it to the residents to do a search. 
and it was very adamant. So that's where I'm kind of torn. So, and it was very clear at the time that a few said, well, and if Mr. Peters puts his name in, but we still have to do this search. We have a duty to the residents to show them that we did a search and we did it correctly and we went according to it. So I'm just throwing out there some things we were hashing out. And again, we're not doing the as of right now. This doesn't even affect him. We're doing the in t five years. We're doing it in, you know, could be two years. Like, I don't know how many more years he plans on working. But when this happened eight, two years ago, we were all pretty adamant, we're gonna do this search. We have to do a search, to be fair, our residents to show them that we're doing our job and we're given equal opportunity. And if that person wants to put their name in and they qualify and they're the best candidate, then guess what? They'll be our city manager. Does anybody remember this conversation? King? Okay. We did, right? And and we said that we needed to do that to be fair for the residents. And I clearly remember that. And I'm saying I'm just throwing out there because I want to be devil's advocate because we're up here. Do we keep it? Do we not keep it? Do we need this? Do we not need it? I'm not doing this to protect anybody. I'm not going to do anything that's going to protect him or not protect him because that's not my job. My job is to do what's best for the position for now and in the future. So it doesn't matter how much I like Mr. Peters and his cheesecake. What has to matter is what we're doing. Our decision is not based on our own personal opinions from our hearts. And I just have to keep reminding of this, of that, because there was quite a few up here that were really adamant. We have to do a search to be fair to the residents. So, I have like three more people on the board, but did you wanna, are you still on the fence of moving this forward or not? You know what? I am, I am gonna say I wanna move it forward at this point. They've changed my mind. I know one, one and two and one probably didn't, but you know, just bring it, they brought up memories of what we went through two years ago that made me remember quite a few conversations and comments up here where we said, it doesn't matter how much we like somebody, you know, we have to do what the residents employ us to do up here or elect us to do, and that is to, if we, we have an obligation to do a search. And if that is the most qualified and that's who we choose, then that's who we choose. But the, 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 the question is not whether we do a manager search. The question is, do we put a time limit on how long someone can be an acting manager or an acting city attorney? That is the question. And not it, whether we do correct. a search or not, because it's not gonna make a difference with him, is what he's saying right. and what the and attorney's saying. But that is, that's the question. Do we wanna put in the charter a time limit as to how long a, char a person can be acting manager or acting city attorney? I say yes, because if we don't, we're gonna just keep pushing it and kicking the, the pot. We're just gonna keep kicking it. We're just gonna keep kicking and kicking and kicking and kicking it down. Because we wanna avoid it. Okay. For whatever reason. If we like him, do the search, he puts his name in, bam, it's done, it's over with. He can't be the manager then because we have a residency requirement unless he, someone moves into the city. So now we're gonna vote, okay, so now we're gonna work, again, we can't go from here. I don't know. I'm, but, I'm but trying I mean, to pull my emotions out, which makes it hard. So okay. what we're voting on now is so emotions. you're good. You're good with you're good with your your view is that we should move this forward to the voters as it stands, correct? Right? I'm okay. Yes, with that. okay. Vice Mayor, you're on the board, and then Commissioner King and Commissioner McCool. Thank you, Mayor. I'm just going to talk about the good part, and then I'll go to the other part. I have been approached by many residents in District Three who have expressed their opinion and they understand the need or the desire of having a city manager living in the city of Deltona. However, they also understand the good job that has been done by the current acting city manager. And they feel 
that either way, they don't think that it should be required, that it should be the citizens who decide on that. Um, because if they're doing a good job, who cares where they live, right? So that's one thing. Going back to um, pushing to recruit a new city manager, I don't know when that happened. Because when Dr. Cooper left, the recruitment of a new city manager stopped. It never went any further, nor have we even attempted to hire anyone to look for a new city manager. So I don't know at what point, maybe I was not here when that happened. But we have not attempted to hire a new city manager. And this is not anything against uh, Mr. Peters. I'm just clarifying something that was just said. The last time we attempted to hire a city manager was prior to Mr. Peters coming on board. Once he took that seat, the re of searching for a new city manager stopped. Um, I sort of agree um, with the fact that we do not have to put a term or, or, or an, exp an, exp um, an expired time because I agree with what the resident um, Albert said. If we don't agree with what the job he's doing, we just don't have to approve his salary raise. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's a hard decision to make. I know that some residents feel that the city manager should live in the city, and then I've heard to so many in District 3 saying the opposite. Um, it's a hard decision to make. Um, and I want to say that I do not want to move forward with this, put in a restriction. Okay. Commissioner King. All right, first thing is, let's just talk about the proposal. The proposal is not necessary. We have never had any verbiage in the charter that's ever said anything about how long an acting city manager or city attorney can be an acting city manager. It's not necessary. And I thought that, I like it when Albert's here because I like it because he does so much research and he does find out things that you and I haven't found out. And I think it's interesting that they want to put something that this has been proposed when there's only one place that we can find in the country that has something similar to it, one. It's not like there's only five cities in this country. So I, I don't see any reason for it. So. I am still opposed to that. My second statement is, I do like Mr. Peters, but I'm not basing what I have to say on whether or not I like him. I base my opinion on the fact that he has done such an exceedingly good job in the position, not whether or not I like him. So let's be clear about that. And if this commission decides that we need to start looking for a city manager and we're going to spend the money, oh, by the way, a couple of years ago when we said we were going to do that, we were talking about $25,000 or so. Let me tell you something. It's probably double that now. 50. And you all want, if you all decide to move forward to that, I can imagine what Facebook is going to look like when everybody starts blowing it up about we're spending all of this money now on searching for a new city manager 
when we have an acting city manager that's doing the best job that anybody's done in the last 20 years. So, you know, we're gonna, you're gonna, you might catch it from some people because we're not actively searching for a city manager, but you're also gonna catch it when you start looking for one and start approving um, additional money in the budget uh, for that, allocating money. It's not gonna be 25,000 anymore. It's gonna be a whole lot more than that. So that's another, that's another topic and another discussion. What we're here for is that, that proposal right there on the screen. And I am against that proposal. It is not necessary. It, it does us no good. <clears throat> and so if you don't mind, I'll just go ahead and make a motion. If it gets second, that'd be great. I move to approve <clears throat> that we do not move this proposal forward. Can you specify proposed amendment three? Oh, no, amendment three. <clears throat> okay, so your, your motion is to not move proposed amendment three forward. Forward, that's correct. So there's a motion by Commissioner King to not move this forward. Is there a second? I will second the motion to not move this forward. And I will explain myself shortly after Commissioner McCool. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Mayor. And indeed, I think that we have um, whittled down to the fact that we're dealing with two distinct issues here. We're dealing with two distinct issues here. Our job is to promote quality of life and make sure that our city manager does that, right? and protect our residents for, from, um, from anything that the charter would not cover here. And what I think is at term here is, it is establishing policy, right? The charter, we're not gonna change this five to 10 years, and establishing policy. And I would hope in good sense that if we needed to I want to know what we're going to, if we vote this down to deny this, what are we going to do with standing the city manager, that, the acting city manager that's currently in place? What are we going to do to make sure that the new commission, I'm talking about new commission, right? We're not always going to be here. I mean, you know, we're not always going to be here. So what are we doing for the protection of our residents to move that process along, right? How do we do that? How do we establish policy in all fairness to move the process of selecting a city manager uh, along? Because how do we protect those residents if something extraordinary happens? Mr. Peter's not here because I'm not even talking about him. He does a great job. The charter is to protect future future. Um, residents, future, right, to protect other than what we have up here right now. I'm pretty sure all of us do a good, good job. I'm sure that anybody that comes after, but what do we do? What protections, right, do we put in place to move that process along? I think that that's what I'm talking about. It's two separate, you know, for me personally, I don't think that it's a requirement of a city manager to live in the city. I think that they should live in the county with quick access to where they're at. But we are limiting the pool of qualified candidates from which to choose. And I think that what we're looking for is quality. You know, we need quality. And, and listen, dedication to a city, we have historical data. We have factual historical data that says to us that someone may live in the city and rent but not do that great of a job at the position. So there's, there are multiple issues at issue here. But what do we do? I need to understand that before, before I vote on that. What do we do to protect the process for, yes, Ms. Kiplo, for future, for future voters or for future dais members? So it does state in the charter, section seven, part one, D, filling of vacancies. The city commission shall begin the process to fill a vacancy days. 
in the charter office of the city manager or the city attorney within 90 days of vacancy. And that's even more restrictive than that, but it is protection and I'm just 90 days. That's it just says that they have to start the process. Start the process. That's all it says. Mm -hmm. We started the process. We started it. The process was started. Um, and it went as far as looking for a search firm. And it went as far as have the, having the search firm bring everything in. So do you want me to say anything more? No, sure. this is a dupl duplication of process is, is what so, I'm reading this at now because if we have an established, we have an established time right now in place in the charter because that's what I was reading, that's what I was asking, if that is our protection, and starting the process, 90 days, 90 days. And that's what the charter says already, which is a shorter amount of time than the amendment. 24 months, 18 months. Ask yeah. for. Is there a limitation on that, starting the process? There's no limitation on that. Process has started. Madam Mayor, can you speak like historic? I mean, can you speak to that? So, the reason I seconded Commissioner King's motion is multifaceted. I've been up here a long time, and I get beat up for that by some people, and it, I get it. I have been through one, two, three, four, five, six city managers, six city managers since 2010, since fall of 2010. Of those six city managers, one had a permanent residence in the city, one. And he was an interim that stayed on for a year. Nobody else had a house in this city that they purchased. Some didn't live in the city, some wouldn't be manager in this, because they weren't gonna give up their house that they have in the county or in another municipality other people chose to rent, keep their house in another city and rent in the city. Um, other people chose as an interim to not even move out of where they were, not even make the process, and they were interim for a year or close to a year. And they were interim manager, which they didn't fall under this permanent manager thing. Like when Mr. Denny was interim manager, when Dr. Cooper was interim manager, nobody forced them within six months to go be in the city. Nobody did because they were in interim or acting. And um, when, and I bring you back to the beginning of the charter, and the beginning of the charter is my understanding that there was no residency requirement. The residency requirement was brought in in 2006, four, eight, something like that. And I understand the fact that you want someone to live in the city but a lot has changed in a lot of ways and how we conduct our society to the point of a pandemic, to the point of virtual meetings, to the point of executive orders by the governor, to the point of um, working from home, to the point of not having to go in an office. And the reason I say these things is the bigger picture for me is a charter. The more we put in a charter that hamstrings a future commission, you don't know to the lady's point who would have thought we would have had a two-year pandemic? Who would have thought we would, we would have seats, bare seats out there? Who would have thought some cities for six, eight months never held a commission meeting that they let people in? Mm -hmm. So the more you hamstring in a charter, and a charter, I believe the same with the Florida Constitution, once it's in there, you ain't getting it out. It's really hard to get it out. And you have to look at what the intent is to put something in a constitution or the charter. What is the intent? If we didn't have an acting manager, would this be an issue? What is the intent for this amendment? And what does that say for future commissions? when you look at our history, and you look at a history, think about what I said, six managers acting interim full since 20, fall of 2010, six. And you're now expecting someone to sell their home or move into the city because we have a residency requirement, and how's that worked out for us in the past? So this, to me, is another tightening of of rules and regulations 
when society itself is going to mobile, to working from home, to, to moving all around the country. It's a different world. And I don't want to put anything in any future commission's hands that, that ties them even more, just like virtual meetings. Just like not being able to call in or be on a, a what well, we didn't have Zoom when that thing was made, right? When they decided to make that policy that you had to be here in person. I understand for a quorum. It's, it's the same thing with, with other policies we've put in place. A lot of those policies were specifically pointed to certain people, and that is not how to govern. To me, in a charter and a constitution, less is more, and that is why I seconded Commissioner King's motion. Not for personal reasons. If it's, it's legit and legally stands up, it doesn't, affect, it doesn't affect him. But what if something happens to him and we get her? I'm just saying, what if he decides to bail out? He wins a lotto. He's done. He's out. He's going to Oregon where, that, where that, they make that ice cream, whatever. She doesn't live in the city. She doesn't live in the city, so she becomes the, the in, interim person. And we have four hurricanes. And then we got to toss her. I mean, it's an example. That is this. That's why Commissioner Ramos... Thank you, Madam Mayor. Unfortunately, we don't want to make it about Mr. Peters, but we continue to make it about Mr. Peters. I hate to say that in the way that we're talking about this. With all due respect, I hear you, Madam Mayor, and I, and I, I think Mr. Peters is doing a great job. But again, let's stick to what this is, not necessarily that we had seven or six or five city commissioners at one time, whether they rent, whether they don't rent or whatnot, because again, all we're doing it is making about Mr. Peters. So I would say, let's call the question whether we want to move this forward or not, because the more we talk about this, the more I keep hearing everybody, again, all I keep thinking of is Mr. Peters. And he already made a disclaimer that whether this passes or not, it does not affect his contract. So again, we are making it about Mr. Peters. So I say, call the question. Thank you, sir. Commissioner McCool, you are on the board. Do you want to call the question where he requested to call the question? Do you want to say, and then we're done? No, I just want, I want to clarify. For, I All right, wait, me. wait, wait, let's go. He wants to call the question. Technically, we need to vote on calling the question. So move to call a question. If there's no second, it dies. I mean, I don't have a problem in you speaking. Okay, we need to vote on whatever, we need to have a vote on the call the question, not on, not on that thing, because that's the pro proper process. Yes. So there's a motion and a second to call the question. Yes or no, do we call the question? Or do you give Commissioner McCool time to speak, so. Otherwise, call the question goes. I thought you wanted to call the question. Okay. Okay, so we call the question. The motion, Joyce, would you please read the motion? Okay, we showed up. Amendment three. So, not move it forward. Okay. The question got voted to be called, so do it. your eyes on point. 
So it does not move forward. Clarify what? Amendment three does not move forward. Amendment three does not move forward. Okay. Okay, Stacy, you're up. Anything else on this? Any other commission comments on any of this? Uh, that covers the five amendments that were proposed by the committee. Now the qu next question is, does the commission want to address anything or does the commission want to not, we're obviously not moving these five forward. Does the commission want to address this for any further discussion on any amendments? Stacy, anything? Any comments from you? Uh, wait, Commissioner King. Well. I think we have to address the issue of inconsistencies in the charter with uh, state law. And if, if we have things that are, that are not right in there, then I would like to hear from, um, from Stacy and from our attorneys what those things are and what is the best way to make our charter right? That's what I'd like to hear. Um, do, do we need to move forward with that and, and get it right? Or are we just gonna continue to go along the way it is and have inconsistencies? That, that doesn't seem like the way to go. And are these something that Need, do they need to move forward at election time? Or are they changes that we can make because of the fact that it's state law and we're just melting the two together so that we have something that's consistent and right? So I, I may have missed that last part, but the only way to change your charter is to actually put it on the ballot. So even though it's in there and it may be inconsistent with a state statute, it stands until you put it through the process for a referendum. Okay, so is this something that we can do between yes. now and the end of July when we need to turn things into? Yes, sir. Okay, so are you two gonna work on that and get back to us or do we have to get some con some uh, uh, consensus. We need consensus, consensus for staff to move and, forward. And and um, Madam Mayor, if I can yes. jump in here, um, Mr. King, um, Mr. Kipolo has done an incredible job um, throughout this entire charter review process. She when has. I told her that she was going to be handling charter review back in August when she was hired, uh, she did a deep dive into the entire charter. Um, and, you know, we have, she uh, has gone through the entire thing in terms of what's required by state law to be in the charter. Um, and so, you know, all you all need to do is tell us what things you want us to work on and we can come back and recommend some charter amendments that will address your concerns specifically and uh, certainly can get that done, you know, well before the end of July. Assuming you don't give us a long list. Commissioner McCool. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And to follow up to your point, uh, Commissioner King, um, I wanted to say first that the job that the Charter Review Committee did was incredible for the amount of germane points they bring up for us to think about, to consider, and to move forward. It was a deep dive, right? It was a deep precursory thorough dive on what our charter is. And the work that they did was amazing in bringing this up to the commission. 
remembering that the commission asked for um, this, the charter review committee, the charter review committee to bring this forward. So first of all, thank you guys for your hard work. I understand that it's frustrating to have that um, tennis match back and forth here, um, but that's what we're talking about our charter. So that's what it has taken them to bring this up. There were smart people on that charter review committee and have brought things up. I know that it is disappointing that, uh, that we've changed things that they recommended. I understand that there is conversation uh, uh, which was brought forth regarding the Charter Review Committee being a totally independent body to move things forward. Um, I, I just understand that, that desire for autonomy. Um, but in moving this forward, since we're talking about our, our charter, Stacy, the work that you guys have done is incredible also. The amount of detail and bringing these things up as compared to what the state says, right? For complying with our state statute, the points that um, Madam Mayor and a couple of other people have brought up about the conciseness of our charter so that we don't get drowned down in things that could be handled by ordinances. I'm appreciative of that. I'm appreciative deeply of point and counterpoint because we do have extraordinary circumstances here, right? We just do. We have a lot of points to consider here. In moving forward with this, and we talked about workshopping or whatever we need to do, right, to, to make this decision before Jul or the end of July, um, I, I understand that public scoping is done at the ballot box, but I believe that there needs to be um, some input also, at least one opportunity in moving this forward that the public scoping, that public would have input on this before we put this down to paper um, because they have to. You know, the general public is not involved with our day-to-day -day doings up here. You see how few people that we have because most people are busy raising their families and working. And, and But this is an important thing and we need to at least afford an opportunity for the public to come and speak. And when I talk about that in a workshop that they have time somehow guys to talk about this um because it, it's important you know the charter review committee did their job and they did it well but i just believe that before we make the indecision on the on this is how we move it forward that there does need to be public input and as much at least there needs to be an offering of of, of public input on this you know on this particular matter so um, that's where I'm at with that. Thank you, ma'am. Commissioner Sosa and then Commissioner Bradford. Now, when we had the Charter Review Committee, if our charter had as many redundancies with state statutes, were those redundancies addressed by our legal department and our staff during the Charter Review Committee? <clears throat> and if they were, what was the feel of the Charter Review Committee? And if they weren't, why not uh, do it at that time? To me, th those are issues that probably should have been discussed during the Charter Review Committee, not up here on the dais now. So I'm not gonna speak for the Charter Review Committee members, um, but it was an independent. The staff were there for staff support. There were several attempts to point out some of the issues that are existing in the charter, um, they chose not to address them. So basically, if our legal representation said, you know, or however we're handling our budget right now, the, the state statute supersedes that, but it's still in our charter, they didn't listen to that or? They didn't take any action to change it. All right, thank you. I mean, me personally, do I think this is something staff should do now that we put on a ballot this year? No. I think this is issues that need to be addressed. I think staff should go through and look for any redundancies within our charter that, you know, go against state statute and bring them forward at our next charter review process is my personal opinion. To try and push something together right now with as many things as we have going on, I, I, I don't think it's the best best use of uh, you know resources uh, this needs to go with the next charter review committee in my personal opinion commissioner bradford it's the exact same points i was going to make um 
This charter review committee went through, was it six months, Ms. Stacy? Five or six? Uh, we had 13 meetings. That's a long time. And now we want to cram all of this in and have it on the ballot by the, Mr. Peters, I think you said the end of July before that next budget, our next um, on the ballot. That's a lot. That's a lot. And I don't want to feel rushed on that. And I'm going to throw a couple of things out there. So I, I don't think this is something, again, I think the way the Charter Review Committee, I think, did a great job. Stacy's done an, a mis uh, you've done an amazing job and you put a lot of time and effort and thought into it. For us to rush and try to get done in two, three months, have two meetings and get these on there is to me just ridiculous. When we can say we don't have to wait for five, 10 years, I mean, we can say, hey, in 2024, we want to make it so that we're clear, we're precise. That gives plenty of time for it to be gone through very strategically. You know, and then we're not feeling like we're rushed to go through it. We don't have to wait for the next 10 years. We can say, hey, 2024, the goal is to let's get this straightened out, have it on the next, you know, election. And that gives staff time. Because you also, Mr. Peters, budget starts when? Now. Okay, so we're going to throw right now a 911 to get this done, get it approved to be before us for July. I think it's just too much. I mean, I don't think it's fair to staff. Um, I, I just, I, I'm gonna totally disagree with it. You know, we also are looking at five people on this dais up for election. So I think something came up before and it was like, you know what, this is something that I think we should be waiting for 20, the, 20, the first of 2023 to start working on this process and to get on the ballot for 2024. That's my own opinion. Okay, oh, hey, there is no one else on the board. Um, Stacy, my question is, um, is there anything in the charter that staff or the charter review committee deemed, or any members of the committee deemed urgent to be brought forth that needs to be corrected with urgency? Urgency? I wouldn't say urgency. Okay, so We're doing to the work point of Commissioner Bradford and Commissioner Sosa, if there is nothing that is um, very problematic at this point, um, two commissioners have already expressed that they have no desire to move anything else forward um, at this point. And what is the, the rest of the commission? If you have any other comments, we need to have at least uh, Commissioner McCool. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, and considering that factor also, thinking about, you know, what do you, how do you impanel a charter review committee to work on this methodically as we go along, you know, here? If we decide that, um, I would hate to see that legacy knowledge lost, you know, that, that has already been uh, done. Um, so I think that there needs to be discussion about that also. Um, and if it was the feeling, indeed, of the, because um, it is true, we're, we're in budget. We're in budget, um, we're in budget right now. And um, I don't, my, my thing too is I do not want the charter, you know, fact of the matter is that, that our, our, our boards, period, do a lot of work right and it sometimes feels that the commission is not listening right or doesn't appreciate and that's not the fact here um, but the fact is is that we owe it to our city because we do this we don't do this often enough to to, to push this forward we have a lot of mitigating factors to consider is where we're at societal right now also the things that we talked about Zoom meetings, technology, the, there's a lot to dissect here again, and I think the initial deep dive uh, was great. So thinking about how do we do that? How do we reestablish, how do we reestablish, uh, you know, a, a furthering charter review committee while at the same time engaging public if we're gonna put this back up for 2024? Commissioner King and then Vice Mayor. I would think that you were all right, except for the fact that we just heard that since Stacy's been here since August of last year, 
She's been working on this. And I would like to hear from her because we just heard from Mr. Peters that it's not a hard task to put together what needs to be done to get this approved and on the ballot now. It, am I wrong? Is that not what I heard, Stacy? I believe it, it can be done. When you take a look at the number of items that need to be in your charter and the things that don't have to be there, obviously we'll need some direction on some things, but compensation, we already heard from you this evening, so I think that gives us a good direction of where you would like to see that land if we did a complete review. Um, there are also items that are already policy. We already have a policy outside of what's in the charter that handles more of the detail. The items follow state statute. Um, those things, certainly I would recommend a review to make sure that the city is up to date on those policies. Um, but a, a complete uh, change in the charter and taking those items out and having ready for you policies that already handle it would be the route that we would go to make sure all of these items are covered somewhere for operation. And it's well within the time frame that we're looking at to get it approved in November. Is that Mr. what we King, heard earlier? Yeah, if I can clarify, when I asked you earlier about how long it would take, I was talking about you, what you were talking about specifically are the items that are in conflict with state statute. Correct. That's a limited number of items. That's correct. And you know, we have identified, Stacy has identified those specific elements. Uh, we have discussed them. Um, a lot of them are just simply taking things out of the charter so that we would just rely on state statute. Um, so that was my answer earlier. I wasn't talking about a complete rewrite. I was just strictly talking about those things that are in conflict with state statute. Well, I, I don't see any reason why we can't move forward with that so that we're not in conflict. And if it's something that can be done now and within the time frame, without interfering with any other work that we're doing, I think we should get it done. Vice Mayor and then Commissioner Ramos and Commissioner McCool. Thank you, Mayor. So I would like um, to, to maybe not tonight, but review the um, page 12 of 30, uh, the city commission meeting. Um, I'm sort of confused because this put us in a little bind during uh, the COVID. And it says public, that we have to have public meetings. Um, and I know that it was overwritten by the, the governors, uh, you know, shutting down the city. But, but then we have a resolution which was passed back in um, 2019. Regarding meetings and Zoom meetings and stuff like that. I believe um, that was 2021, wasn't it? It says 2000, July 2019. Okay. Oh, yeah, past 2021. Okay, so it, it was revised and passed. So which one do we follow? The charter or the... I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's like one overrides the other, but the charter... Over, I, I don't know. Was that... What's the resolution? The resolution was because of we couldn't have a public meeting, but the charter says it has to be public. Uh, was that the governor's? The governor. The right. change that you made in 2021 was to allow commissioners to attend virtually. And that the state overrides right. our charter. Correct. Right. However, because we couldn't have the public here, they, you know, that we were being quoted the charter, right? Because it says that we have to have public meetings. So, 
If I remember that right, with government, or Governor DeSantis, when he issued that executive order, he said cities could hold meetings, but only that you could keep public participation out only if you weren't discussing anything that needed public participation, like if we were talking about salaries for staff or something that was in dire need of the city. It wasn't just about a general agenda. It was specifically geared that you could avoid the public comment only if it was geared only towards city business. That was what I understood from that executive order. I don't know, Commissioner, because a lot of cities shut down their public uh, participation and kept it like that for months and months and months. I mean, we did it for one meeting. And I know being on the mayor's calls through the League of Cities, there were a lot of cities that had their, their public meetings shut down. Well, just because they shut them down didn't mean it was legal. Well, that, that, but they, they used that as, a, as the legality. Right. Stacy, did you want? Yeah. No. Skip, what, do you have any comments on that? Well, it's difficult to, to analyze it unless you have a specific situation. Otherwise, you kind of talk in general. When the governor acted as he did, it was an emergency measure. Now, whether that would be appropriate today, no, it probably would not. But at that point in time, I think you'd be hard-pressed to find anybody in significant authority that would have disagreed with it. So you deal with these things as they come up as best you can, realizing that something else is going to happen tomorrow and you need to be prepared for it. Now, for anything that might be in our current charter that's inconsistent with state or federal law, I think we need to correct it. And I'm talking to the state and what we thought we could maybe do, and she's better informed on this than I am, quite honestly, is come back to the commission with a report. Here's one line, here's two lines, here's three lines, and here's what you change them to. And either accept it or don't accept it. And I suspect we could probably have that put together by uh, the end of next month. What is this? This is, this is April by the end of May, which would give you a couple of months to consider it, I guess. Is that ballpark accurate? Partially done. Partially done. Well, I kind of knew that, but I wasn't going to tell them. You, you understand what I'm suggesting, notes. Mayor? They have the notes in front of them of what I already put together, so that's what I mean by partially done. It's all, a lot of the research has already been done. Commissioner Ramos and uh, then you. Commissioner McCool. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I, I, I think the key is in um, our city attorney kind of like uh, mentioned, the inconsistency. I think if, if, if we can be brought a report of the inconsistency of the conflicts between ours and what states, state statutes say, I don't think we're doing anything crazy. Uh, we're just trying to clean up. Now, that being said, did, did the Charter Review Committee not talk at certain times about language that they wanted to clean? And I know at certain times it was put to the side. Was there anything that they wanted? Because I know there were some conversations and they said, oh, that's cleanup language. We can leave that for later. Is there anything from the Charter Review Committee in reference to that? I don't recall any cleanup. Do you recall any cleanup? So, I, I would suggest then that if, again, to, to city attorneys a, a point that if we can be brought within a month or whatever time frame is um, in reference to cleaning up the language and the inconsistency, I don't think we're doing anything major uh, to our charter review. We just want to put it consistent. Uh, that being said, I, I would, I'm not sure, would, but I would make a motion for that. Uh, that staff brings back to us uh, somewhat of a report with the inconsistencies to clean up our charter review. I did. It, well, okay, properly uh, moved by Commissioner Ramos and seconded by Commissioner King for staff to bring forth um, items in the charter that are inconsistent. Commissioner McCool, and then I have a quick comment. Yeah, and absolutely, that's what I wanted um, because there are a lot of moving parts within here. And Stacy, I'm pretty sure if, if I know you a little bit, you do have something already started as far as what a clean charter would look like. Do you have that? Like a No, the packet that you have in front of you has a lot of those inconsistencies already mm -hmm. pointed out and the 
where policies already exist and where mm -hmm. state statutes are potentially in conflict or are the overriding, they're not really, right. it's not necessary for you to have it in your charter. So yes, if you'd like me to condense what's currently in front of you, that's fine. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Just a short dummy copy to, to see, you know what I mean? Because there's no a lot of language here. And I, like I said, I'm pretty sure you might have had that already written to, to see what that looks like and bring back so that we can make a determination based off of that, right, without all of the circuitous, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. stuff in here, if that's possible, because I would absolutely, what? <laughs> You good, Commissioner McCool? Uh, absolutely, yes ma'am. So looking at Volusia County's Charter Review Commission, pulling out some of this stuff from past uh, county charter commissions, since a lot of emphasis was placed on how the Volusia County Charter Review Commission does their report, um, they had one item that they brought forward, not only one, but it was a modification of legislative procedures to conform to law and repeal of superseded or obsolete provisions. Bam. Bam. Right? So there it is. And that, that was something that they brought forward. Um, so modification of legislative procedures to conform to law and repeal of superseded or obsolete provisions. So I don't know, I can't dig any deeper in this short amount of time on how, how they referenced that, what their attachments were, but that was something that they brought forward. If that covers what the commission wants to do, we have a motion and a second. Is there any public comment on this? No, Madam Mayor. Okay, let's vote on bringing these things forward that are conflicting, et cetera. I don't know, Vice Mayor is having, it keeps disappearing and flipping in and um, out. She's had, her, hers keeps shutting off. You just, she just got a new one? Well, that, that baby ain't working, it keeps shutting down. Uh, um, Madam Mayor? Yes. I am very sorry, but as I would like to um, reiterate what exactly, could you clarify the motion, please, in verbiage? I will have Joyce re read the motion. I'm sorry, Joyce, I can't hear. Could you turn your microphone on and repeat? that staff bring back a report of the inconsistencies to clean up the current city charter claim, charter. Thank you. Are you stretching for time yeah. to be a winner? Yeah. How much time do we need? <laughs> Can we vote? I'm a cool not voting. So one more time. Can you, re can you read that one more time? Because I thought the motion was to bring forth the inconsistencies with Florida State statute, not the whole charter, not to review the whole charter. I had the, that staff bring back a report of the inconsistencies. She just voted, she just moved my screen. The to she just to said. clean up the city charter, you want, so you want to add this one, uh, right? Good point, Commissioner uh, Bradford. I did say in reference to state law. Yes, I'm good. Okay. You still not voting? I'm on, oh, man. Okay. Okay, it is unanimous. Okay, so that takes care of our agenda this evening. Correct, Miss Stacy? Yes, ma'am. Okay, we only have city manager acting man comments. None tonight. He has none tonight. I just have one quick thing, a reminder that we have a workshop coming up on Monday. Ms. McCool will be happy to know it's on transportation 201, traffic calling. Okay, that is it. Then we, what am I doing? We're almost, am I adjourning? We are adjourned. Did you win? No. I hit one of those. Who won? This one. <laughs> I don't know. Are we adjourned? <laughs> what did you have? <laughs> we are adjourned, yes. Are I said we adjourned? we're adjourned. Yes, gavel.